Well, he was Australia's first king of pop with hits we know and love to this day. And now Normie Rowe is teaming up with two other icons for a very special tour you won't want to miss. To tell us more about it, here is the legend himself, Normie Rowe. Normie, welcome to the Ange Robin Robbo Show. Thanks very much, Robbo. Thanks, Ange. It's uh, a great pleasure to be with you. Finally, te technicals uh, notwithstanding. You were very good because before the show we did our technical checks and it took you a little while, but you got there, Normie. You showed that anyone can work this damn fangled technology. Yeah, well, I, it, it was a new thing for me, this uh, the one that you're using, and uh, so I had to learn, do a very quick learning <laughs> process. That's, that's all there is with these things. It's just learning all the time. Absolutely. Now, look, Normie, you have doing such a fantastic tour with Diana Lee and Jade Hurley. Tell me a bit about this, please. Well, Diana, of course, was a big star in the 60s. Uh, she came to Australia from New Zealand after having a number of hits over there. She had uh, uh, Do the Blue Beat and uh, Don't You Know Yokomo and Repetite. And she was known as the queen of the mods. All the girls wanted to have hair like Dinah Lee and, mm. and do the dance thing that Dinah did. Um, and uh, so, so she was, she's the girl version of it all. And then, of course, along came uh, Jade Hurley, and he was sitting back there um, uh, <laughs> on his piano uh, when I was in primary school, I'm going to say. <laughs> Is that a believable story, Normie? <laughs> oh, it's an absolutely believable story because I saw him on 6 o'clock rock and that was in the 1950s. Oh, really? So, yes, it was uh, uh, a very a very different time um, for me because I hadn't even really oh, – I don't think I'd decided to, that that's what I'd like to do for a job. But uh, it's funny, I said to my dad, when I grow up, I want to be a singer. He said, you can't do both. <laughs> How wrong he was. Parents don't know everything. Look, I have to say – and then. Then Rob, and then he said, "I'm going to tell you this." Then he said, "When you, when you, you know, if you go into recording, don't ever record a song you can't sing when you're 60." <laughs> and I thought that's a long way away. <laughs> so I recorded "Shaking All Over," yes. and I'm 74 now, and I, I actually can do the shaking better now because I don't have to work at it. <laughs> And this is the point. You released some brilliant movie music from the 60s onwards that we still love today. What do you reckon has been your your secret to longevity and timelessness? Oh, look, I think getting up every day and reinventing every day. The thing that I... The, the first thing I do when I, when I wake up, I get out of bed. Yep. The, the next thing I do is I make my bed. Uh, and, and from that time on, it's all about decision making right from the, from the time I wake up until the time I go to bed at night. And I think if I can do just one good thing each day, uh, by the time I've finished uh, a year, I'll have done 365 good things. So I think that's, you know, that's not a bad mm. year's work. And uh, when, when you've done 74 of those, um, I suppose you're constantly reinventing it's a, it's uh it keeps life fresh man i really like that that's a great approach look I, I want to talk a bit about your career because you are a really interesting case study to me because you were really popular and you then you went to vietnam and you struggled when you came back um yeah. to to make it musically and I actually didn't know this, but Molly Meldrum actually banned you from Countdown. Now, how did this happen, and what was all this about? Yes, how did he, how dare he do that? Damn straight. Oh, look, I have absolutely no idea. I I don't know the reason, uh, and even if that that was fact, all I know is that I didn't appear once on Countdown in, in its entire history, and uh, and I I was tried to do the right thing, be nice to people and everything. But uh, I didn't see, uh, it, you know, like I said, I didn't see a countdown camera for the whole time of its, its existence. Fortunately for me, that wasn't so for, uh, you know, for the from the nine network and, and the ten mm. network. 
Uh, even the Seven Network, I, were, I did the Tonight Shows that they had, and uh, I did all the Tonight Shows that Don Lane and, and uh, even Graham Kennedy and all those sh sort of shows. Uh, and I also did um, uh, the Midday Show regularly uh, and, and Young Talent Time and uh, a, a few of the other ABC shows. But it, it just seemed to elude me, both that and eventually Hey Hey at Saturday. But I found out why I was uh, I was persona non grata there. But it's it's a, a discussion for another time. Is it, Normie? Is it? <laughs> uh, well, it is. It is because... Uh, We've uh, all heard stories say... about that show, mate. Don't you worry. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. But uh, it would sound like sour grapes. But uh, look, you know, the thing is I'm but still going. Doesn't. And... I've got to say... It's interesting talking to you now because you seem philosophical. I feel like you're someone who's been on a bit of a journey, you know, like you've you've been the young punk, for want of a better word, doing the music. You've gone and seen combat in Vietnam. You've come back and struggled. Like we, we've only touched the tip of the iceberg on that. But, you know, like Australia was a different place. We were shunning the the people that had fought for our country. We didn't really give them the respect of coming back from war. And you've really been through some tough times throughout your life. But I sit here talking to you now on the verge of this tour and you have this feeling to me of a bit like a man who's a bit like, I've seen it all, I've done it all, and now I just want to enjoy myself. Well, you know, you get to a point, I think, in your life where uh, the, there is no reason to go back into into things that might have been or might not have been um <laughs> and i was i was out today with peter cook the famous racehorse jockey oh, yeah. and he said he said to me you keep saying it is what it is <laughs> and and i do i say look you know it is what it is you do something about the things you can do something about and the other things, there's no real point in worrying about it. But I've had that philosophy since I was a teenager for some reason. And and one day I went to New Zealand. I, I, I was in New Zealand and I was talking some to some Maoris at uh, Rotorua and I said, your people always seem to be happy. And he said to me, Normie, you know, we have a, a saying here uh, in New Zealand. Live for today, for tomorrow may never come. <laughs> True. Absolutely and, great advice. And, 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 I, and I sort of, I don't know whether I ever consciously did it, but, you know, if you consciously grasp something like that for a little while, it will become a habit for you. So, you know, it, it forms habits. And then, then you can, you know, you go on with your life. I mean, I, I honestly know that, you can't change anything in your life but your attitude. Mm. But by changing your attitude, you can change every single thing in your life. Well, look, you are proud of everything you've done and you haven't been afraid to stand up for yourself. I, I have to show this to people who haven't seen it because I'm a TV geek and this is one of the most famous scenes that ever occurred on Australian TV. You know what I'm about to talk about. <laughs> yeah. I'm just checking my watch for the time. Yeah. By the way, this will be the third time today. <laughs> oh, really? Is that what... OK, look, first of all, we're going to talk about it in a moment. It's been 31 years since this moment on midday. Let's talk about it after we take a quick look. And, and you are a sanctum. I, I have been an Australian from told, day one. Uh, you, right you, from, you live with a badge and that's you all you've got. Is? I think, do you is know what that is? What is it? What is it? <laughs> Interesting, Normie, you said you have, you know, I have no doubt people still talk about this. It was such an iconic moment on TV. And despite it, the fact it was the midday show, everybody thinks they saw that live <laughs> when they should have been at school and work. <laughs> I, got a, I got a call from a friend of mine who was working ships in Norway and he said, I just saw you on TV. <laughs> <laughs> But so, all over the world, it was amazing. It went, you know, it went to England and Europe and the United States and Canada and oh, look, 
South America, all sorts of places that came back, reports that had been been on the local television screens. But, uh, you know, knowing what I know now, I would never have even put myself in that situation because mm. uh, I, uh, I, I, I study, I, um, I suffer with, well, I don't suffer, I, I have a strategy to deal with my post-traumatic stress disorder, which seems to do today to work. I don't put myself in stressful situations. I knew it was going to be stressful, and yet I still went ahead and uh, and turned up, you know, because Ron was had a he had a big name for for creating I mean, havoc cracker. on he, live he, television. He courted controversy. That's that was what he did, you know. Um, he he tipped a glass of water or something. Uh, he threw a I glass recall. of water down in front of Yarn Event. Yarn Event, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, look, he he was an interesting man, I guess, you know, and he created that interest constantly by uh, by doing things out of uh, just out of the square. It's interesting, though. Uh, just before I let you go, I, I want to go back to something you said there that you've learnt with um, ways of dealing with your post traumatic stress. Was that part of what played into that day, was it, that you were going oh, into a stressful situation, as you said, yeah. and then, you know, things came up. He was saying pretty outrageous things, and yeah. it was a lack of knowing how to deal with that when you were feeling all this stuff from being in Vietnam and everything that happened since. Tell me about that. I think for me it was much more about, protecting my friends who don't have a platform, mm. uh, you know, and, and I've got maybe 50, 60,000 Vietnam veteran friends. Uh, probably a few hate me, but uh, still, you know, you can't please everybody. But I think, uh, uh, you know, if somebody says something that I think is totally derogatory and something unfair, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm going to stand up because I that's the place that I've put myself uh, ever since I came back. You know, I, if I was going to be in show business again, it wasn't going to be for the, the self-flagellation of the, the pop star, you know, where you go on stage purely and simply to get people to love you. I, I couldn't do that anymore. It had to be for something, something substantial. And, and between that and trying to, 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 uh, do stuff uh, charity wise for kids uh, with disabilities and and uh, disadvantages all over the world sick kids um you know it it made me it gave me the license to uh, uh, to actually be in the business that i'm in well, Normie, I, I've got to say, I think you are a legend and I have really enjoyed this chat. Three Legends in Concert begins this weekend in Newcastle. Please don't miss this amazing show. If I was in Newcastle, I would be there. Head to threelegendsinconcert.com for information and tickets. Normie, thank you so much for being on the Andrew Rob and Robbo Show. Rob, when you put that uh, logo up, it reminded me of the first time it came back, the LEG and the ENDS were separated. It just looked like three leg ends. Oh. <laughs> Norby, you're hilarious. I, I, please go and see this concert this weekend. Normie, thanks again. Thanks very much, Rob. See you at uh, the Civic Theatre in Newcastle. Ah.